friend to us, <clears throat> a child is born, <clears throat> excuse me, to us, a son is given, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his rule and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom with justice and righteousness forever and ever. Now we light the candle of proclamation and joy. May our hearts be forever filled with the joy of his coming. Let us pray. Father, we are filled with joy because we have hope and peace that you have sent your son for all that believe. Help us to be the voices that proclaim grace and truth. Amen. begins on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might to come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Now a reading from the prophet Zephaniah. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult. Exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home, at the time when I gather you. For I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. And now, let us say together, Canticle 9. The first song of Isaiah is printed in your pew bulletin. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, he shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Bring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now a reading from Paul's first letter to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do like, likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we? What should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water. The one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn, burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people, the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Christ. spoken and what is heard, may the word of God be understood. In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, traditionally called Gaudete, or Rejoice Sunday. The name comes from today's lesson from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. It is also reflected in the opening hymn that we've been singing each Sunday these past few weeks. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel will come to you, O Israel. We light the rose candle, symbolizing our joy in the coming of Christ instead of another one of the more somber purple candles. And in some churches, even the clergy vestments are a rose hue. In both of our Old Testament scriptures we heard today, rejoicing is the common theme. The prophet Zephaniah calls for shouts of joy. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem because the king of Israel is in her midst. And the prophet Isaiah tells people to rejoice and sing the praises of the Lord, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. So Advent, as we know, is a season of waiting, expectation and preparation for the coming of the Lord. We know that Jesus will be born, be born very soon now, so we certainly should rejoice. Next week's gospel reading from Luke would certainly have been a very appropriate choice for today. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, 
exalts Mary in the hymn that we call the Magnificat. For he has looked with favor on the loneliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. Mary is a wonderful messenger of the spirit of joy, of rejoicing, of Gaudete Sunday. But instead of joyous Mary, today we once again get the rough, wild, unwashed, uncouth, straight-talking prophet coming to us right out of the desert, none other than John the Baptist. He is yelling at the seekers who are coming out to be baptized by him. You brood of vipers, he screams at them. Seemingly not the best approach for creating new converts, right? And it certainly doesn't sound like he's rejoicing very much, does it? Once he finishes his outburst, John begins to hammer on his theme of repentance. He tells the crowd not to take for granted their status of children of Abraham as guarantees of salvation. It is not who they are or who their ancestors were. It is what they do that is most important. And he warns them that they need to bear fruits of their repentance because there is a sharpened axe just waiting by the roots of the tree, just in case no fruit is produced. He tells them that the one who is coming will gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff will be burned with unquenchable fire. This is rejoicing. One might have thought that those who came and were yelled at would turn right around and leave, but they didn't. John may sound harsh to us, but people somehow must have felt his authority, his sincerity, his telling the hard truth of, with love, his genuine concern for the people's need to repent before the coming of the Lord. You sometimes hear people say that in the Roman Catholic and Episcopal churches, since there is absolution of sins every Sunday, that we can do whatever we want on the, week, on the weekdays and on Sunday be absolved from a full week of sinning. Is that what repentance, confession, and absolution are all about? Only doing lip service? This might be the kind of thinking that caused John to call them a brood of vipers. In the confession we say together, we are truly sorry and we humbly repent. We are truly Sorry, and we humbly repent. This should be a confession from the heart. It should not be lip service. We shouldn't be reciting the confession of sin as just a rote part of the liturgy. The crowd swarming John not only do not depart in the face of his ranting and raging, but they actually stay and ask him for answers. What then should we do, they ask, indicating a true wish to understand for us to turn from their old ways of life. This is a frequent question that is asked in Luke's gospel, more so than any, any of the other gospels combined. What should we do? John the Baptist knows that the Messiah is coming soon. He feels the urgency. He wants people to be prepared and to bear fruit. So he gives them advice. And despite his brusque reputation, John's advice to the people in the crowd is much easier than Jesus's will be when he shows up on the scene. John tells them to share with others of what they have. A much easier task than when, when Jesus will later tell the rich young man to sell all he owns and to give it all to the poor. For when he says he has come bearing a sword to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother, or when he says we must eat his flesh and drink his blood, now these are harsh words. John merely says, if you have two coats, share one. If you have food, share it. In other words, care for others who have less than you do. Love your neighbor. Next, he addresses the tax collectors. They too ask, what should we do? 
And at that time, the tax collectors were mostly Jews who were hired for, by the Romans. And they kept a portion of whatever they collected. So they made themselves rich by collecting more than was really owed. John tells them to be fair with the people and not to collect more than they should, thus imparting further hardships on those who are struggling already. And finally, the third group, the soldiers, most likely Roman soldiers, and they come asking the same thing. What should we do? This time, John tells them not to exploit people or to make false accusations and to be satisfied with their wages. In other words, they should serve with integrity and honor. This scripture passage shows the diversity of the group who have come out to see John. The crowd represents Jews who have plenty and enough, the wealthy tax collectors, the outcasts, soldiers, and Gentiles. They are all seeking to change their lives. And even though John is harsh in the beginning, he gives advice to them all. And his advice is not dramatic. He just asks them to turn from what they are doing in their own way and instead to start doing things the right way, God's way. The people want to change and are waiting for their Messiah to come. With John's urgent teaching, they suspect him to be that Messiah. But he knows his call is to clear the way for the real one yet to come. John is to introduce the coming of Jesus, guiding people to see God's way. He tells, the, he tells the people that the Messiah, the Christ, is coming with the Holy Spirit and fire. Christ will come with power and great might of God to be among us. John the Baptist is teaching us to care for those in need, to seek justice, and to have integrity, foretelling us part of what following Jesus will be about he does come. With true repentance to prepare for the coming of the Messiah, rejoice. Rejoice and repent. John the Baptist is preaching in the wilderness, a place where one may get lost, a barren place that seems devoid of life or hope. Wilderness is actually a pretty good metaphor for our situation in this day and time. We are in a world constantly bombarded by media, especially social media. We are bewildered and befuddled by news and fake news, truth and alternate truths. There seems to be no peace in the world. Natural disasters seem to be occurring more often. Hope seems to be dwindling. So we as Christians need to ask, what should we do? We should carry the prophetic voice of John the Baptist calling out for true rep repentance. We should examine and change our ways of life that fall far, far short of the glory of God. The gap between the haves and the have-nots is increasing. Are we willing to share with those with less? Or, are we willing to, or, or will we continue to take more from others who are already struggling? Will we continue to benefit ourselves? Are we going to elevate our status at the expense of hurting others? Are we to offer false accusations by telling half-truths or even totally lying? Are we willing to call ourselves out when we do these things? John the Baptist has given us the direction to be prepared for the coming of Christ. Are we willing to turn around? Are we courageous enough to hear and heed his ancient yet still prophetic voice. Repent and rejoice. Here's a final little tidbit that I did not know. This third, third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday, is also called Stir Up Sunday because today's call it says, Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us because we are so sorely hindered by our sin, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Now in my mind, Mary definitely would have been a wonderful herald of joy for today's Gaudete Rejoice Sunday. The 
Perhaps John the Baptist is the right messenger after all. Who better to stir things up? Who better to shake us out of our comfort zones? Who better to prepare us for the coming of Christ? Repent and rejoice. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, the law that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God. On page 383 of the prayer book, let us pray for the church and for the world. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For Justin, Archbishop of Canberra, Michael, our presiding bishop, Holson, our bishop, Daniel, bishop of Uruguay, Tammy, our priest, and Bobby, our deacon, and the clergy and the people of the Diocese of Oklahoma and the Diocese and Cycle of Prayer, we pray for St. Matthews, Enid, and the Church of the Holy Spirit, Montevideo, Uruguay, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. For our President Joe, our Governor Kevin, our Mayor Randy, the Governor of the Chickasaw Nation Bill, and for the leaders of the nations and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this city, Ada, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, and for all the blessings of this life, especially for those in our parish cycle of prayer. Tyson and Christy Brown and their children, Winston and Zoe, for Stan and Johnny Caulfield, for those celebrating birthdays this week, Steve Becker and E.B. Ryden, for those celebrating anniversaries, Dustin and Christy Shepherd. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. The altar flowers are given by Denver and Tori Davison in memory of her sister Diane Dillon Patterson. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, the sick and the suffering, 
for those serving our country at home or abroad. We also pray for our veterans, especially for those still struggling with wartime wounds. Let them feel your comfort and healing grace. For those who are in hospitals, for those who need healing, Mary Criswell, Joyce DeBauer, Mike Sire, Maya Walker, Larry Beauchamp, Diane West, Tanya Eldred, John Elliott, River Northcutt, Mike Jackson, Kelly Joe Picker, <coughs> Patty Buchanan, Doug Boucher, Margie Beck, Marie Monton, Craig Kincaid, Kyler Brown, Bill Yerby, Donna Albritton. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, especially Shirley Shirley and her friends and family in their bereavement, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. In the communion of St. Luke's and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Continuing on page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, and God, word and deed, by all our good and bad. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. everybody it's so great to see you I see old friends and new friends and it's never the same when you're not here so we're so glad to see all of you this morning um, and, and hello and Facebook land and everything out there um, I just wanted to say we had a fantastic uh, angel tree party for our children we had 23 children and family members well 23 children and their family members come through and receive their gifts from our, our congregation so I wanted to thank you for your generosity in providing all those special things for them because it was a really special night, so thank you. And a special thanks to Shirley for coordinating it uh, and to everyone who had some participation at any level 
Uh, it's a very important ministry, and I'm just so grateful that we're doing this every year. So, so thank you, Shirley, and to all who contributed to that. There's lots going on in the next couple of weeks, so I just turn your attention to your announcements and to be mindful of that. We have, I know, an acolyte training on the 23rd. No, it's this Saturday on the 18th. 18th, 10:30. 10:30 on the 18th. Uh, getting ready for the, the big day. So just uh, be mindful, six o'clock on Christmas Eve, we'll have our service. Also next Saturday at one o'clock, there'll be a memorial service for um, for the um, Carolyn Busby's family, for, her, for Carolyn Busby and her family will be here. So please get the word out and let others know that you know would be interested in attending that service uh, at one o'clock on Saturday. Yes, Vestry, 1 o'clock. Kate? Um, I just wanted to know on our youth schedule for the week, it has a TBA for the 15th. We will be meeting at Hobby Hobby to ring the bell for Salvation Army. Um, so that's what we'll be doing this week. I'm not sure if TBA is not going to be doing that. At 5 o'clock. Five to seven, what night did you say? The 15th. The 15th. Night. Okay, great. Any any other announcements for the good of the order? Uh, we're, we're grateful to have Carson, who's playing the organ for us today. Um, so thank you for being here. And walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Eucharistic Prayer B can be found on page 367. Please stand if you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
him in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. This is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ.
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. In this Advent season of hopefulness and expectation, may the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always.
So if you have lost some folks or would like to just come and uh, be here with others who have, please know that you're welcome to that. Thank you. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Don Carson. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, uh, last minute yeah. time on your Oh, you're welcome. I hope you. Uh, I thought you said you wrote it.